In this tutorial, we are going to use the terrain tools within Kodu to build some worlds. We're also going to use a special kind of object called a path node, which allows us to set up invisible paths for enemy bots to follow. We will do this in order to create a racing game. We can see here in the two different screens, one is in design view, the other is in playing view. And in the first view, a path has been laid out using red nodes, and each node is a corner with a straight line joining it. In the real game, these do not appear, they are invisible, but enemy players, such as this cycle, can follow the path and look as if they are controlling their own steering. So, we're going to start off setting up our game area. We're going to use the ground brush to draw a racing track. It's important that we put in a start zone and an end zone and make the thing into a loop. And we are then going to use the hill tools to roughen or flatten the terrain. So start in Kodu and click on New World. You will have to use the scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. You want to have a reasonable distance so that you can see a lot of the terrain at one time. And we're just going to start off painting a large amount of the ground. Now, if I start to draw I'm using a small brush, I can use the arrow keys to make this pretty large. And that makes it much quicker to draw in the terrain. Once you have a fair sized amount of terrain, go back to the brush tool, choose a different color of grass, so I'm going to go for, or perhaps even uh, make your track out of something else like this grey here. I'm going to then uh, go down to a reasonable size brush. Don't go down to the very smallest because the track has to be wide enough to be able to steer on it. And draw in a path, some loops that must come back and join to the start. Once you have your start sorted out, you need to have a start zone and an end zone. So I'm going to go for uh, an end zone with this hatch on it of number 26. And I'm going to go for a start zone that's maybe a bit darker, like number 19. OK. It would be useful to have some uh, hillside either side of the track. So I'm going to go and choose a, a different colored grass. And with a very small brush, just paint carefully around the outside and inside of the track. Don't worry if you clip a little bit out, but try not to make the main track part too thin, otherwise your cycles will struggle to drive around it. I'm going to do that both inside and outside. Just need to scroll out a little bit to see this. So I'm using the scroll wheel there to zoom in and zoom out. OK, so once you have a little bit of terrain around the inside and outside of your track, we're then going to raise the track. Now if we use the uh, hill and brush tool, it starts out usually as a square or a circle. If I use that square, I can make some of the land higher up. We zoom in, you should be able to see that. It is raising the land slightly. But we want all of the track to be raised, so the best way to do that is to use the magic brush. The magic brush will pick up all of the terrain that's the same and raise it or lower it at the same time. So you see that all of the track is flashing. 
couple of clicks has raised that up and I want to do the same for the start and end zone. A couple of clicks in each one so they're the same height. I then like to make maybe one click on the tr terrain just inside the track and one click on the terrain just outside the track. And the reason we've done this is to leave a low-lying zone so we can then put some water in it. So if I take the water tool and then click in here, I can then have a lake that's filling the inside of the track. You can, of course, go back and then use the standard hill and valley tool possibly with uh, the mottled brush to then give a little bit of a rough edge to the outside of your track. Perhaps a little bit of a larger brush would make that better. And you could of course create a little mountain in the middle of the lake is a little island. Once you've created your terrain, you then want to get onto your player characters. So I'm going to scroll in with the hand tool, move back a little bit. First, we want to put the player character on, so I'm going to start off with a cycle. And our cycle comes on here, and it's facing the wrong way, it's facing into the lake. So we would start off and rotate, take that down to 270 degrees, and that will be facing in the right direction around the track. We then want to program so that when the keyboard, I'm going to use the WASD keys. When the WASD keys are pressed, that will then move the cycle. And because it's a race, we probably want to put in quickly, quickly, quickly to make it a really fast cycle. If I try that out, our cycle can drive around and accidentally go into the water. If I do get into the water, I'm probably stuck. Okay. So we've set up our game area. Uh, our camera probably is a free camera to start with, but you could check that in the world settings. And we have added a cycle that we've rotated and put some code in. We're now going to set up another cycle and this one will be a red cycle that is the enemy and it's going to follow around on a red path. So in Kodu what we need to do is we'll need to zoom out so back to the hand tool and zoom out a bit. I'm going to use the path tool. And the path tool can be a little bit tricky. You click at each of the corners and then join to make a path. And as long as you keep it nice and smooth, everything should be fine. And it wants to join back to the starting point. The reason this path is red is because I've done that before. Notice it still wants to continue. Remember that escape stops the last thing you're doing. If I point at the path, with the path tool on, I need to point at a node. It will then let me choose which color to make. So I can have a blue path, a purple path. I'm going to have a red path here for a red cycle to follow. And then going back to the object tool, I'm going to put on another cycle. And that cycle would have to rotate 
to 270 to be facing in the correct direction. Now I'll just zoom in here a little bit so we can see what we're doing. This cycle, I want to be a red cycle on the red path. And I'm then going to program it so that when, well, always, all of the time we want this cycle to be trying to beat us. So always is when I want it to move on the path. path to choose has to be going to colours the red path. And I can also make that go quickly, quickly, maybe just too quickly compared to us to give us a chance. If I now just check my world settings, I've got a free camera so it should follow the player around. And I'm going to press escape. And it looks like the enemy has gone off in the wrong direction. Now, if we start him on the path, so if I go to the object tool and drag him so that he's actually on the path, then he won't have to turn to get to it and he should set off correctly. Or perhaps not. If I start maybe on the actual node, oh, let me start him off the node so that he has to go forward to find the path. and then he's set off in the right direction. You may have to experiment with the positioning to get the best start for your enemy. So, we set up a path for the enemy, we get check that it's following correctly. Uh, we then need to set up who's going to win or lose the game. If our player, who's in grey, gets to the end zone first, then that should be a win. If the red cycle gets to the red the end, end zone first, then that is a lose for us. So clicking on my grey cycle, I'm going to program. When he is I'll go to more and on land. The land that was the end zone was uh, type 26. So this hatched grey. And when I get to there, I'm going to go to game and win. But for the red cycle, similar coding, when it is on land, so more on land. When it goes to type 26, the grey hatching, then at that stage it's going to do game end and I'll have lost the game. So, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see what's going on. The enemy cycle has set off on the path. He is following these invisible nodes to try and work his way around. I've not moved my player at all because I want to see what happens when the enemy gets to the end. So I'm just going to zoom out and see what's happening here. And when the enemy then gets onto this end zone, it's game over. If I had got there first, I would be the winner. Okay. So, we've managed to create up our victory and failure conditions. Uh, we could add various power-ups, and we could, for example, slow down the player if he goes on to rough terrain, or we could use keys to have an, an extra speed boost for how we turn or how we accelerate, or we could put objects in the way um, that could slow down the player. So an ink cloud, for example, that changes the move speed. But these are some of the options you have for making an improved game.